Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, and today we're in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We resume our study in verse 13, actually 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. You can study all of God's Word with me any time that you want to, as much as you want to. Using my audio Bible messages, just choose, click, and listen from four complete series going through the whole Bible verse by verse. That's at the Bible, verse by verse dot com. I want to begin reading in verse 11 of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them, who glory in appearance and not in heart. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be of sober mind, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. One died for all, and it's good for us that he did, because that one was the Lord Jesus Christ. The whole human race had been tried, convicted, and sentenced to hell by God because of their sin. But Jesus, our Creator, Jesus, Almighty God, became a man, lived a sinless life, died on the cross to pay for our sins so that we can escape hell. The love of Christ compelled him to do that for us, and the love of Jesus who lived in Paul and the love of Jesus who lives in other Christians compels those Christians to do what they can do to, in some way, help people escape hell. And the best way to do that is to get out the Word of God. In fact, that's the only way to do it, is to get out the Word of God. 15. And that he died for all, that they who live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him who died for them and rose again. And this really is the Christian life in a nutshell. Jesus died so that those who receive him as Lord and Savior will thus escape hell. And they will no longer live to please themselves once they receive Christ. That's the Christian life in a nutshell. You receive Christ so that you don't go to hell. And then you don't live to please yourself after you do that. But Christ, who's the only reason that you have something to look forward to. In other words, we are called to serve Jesus because we are grateful. 16. Wherefore, henceforth, Know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Now it is important for Christians not to judge things the way the unsaved world does. The world's value system is not at all God's value system. And success to the world is not necessarily success to God. For example, many see Jesus as a failure because he was crucified. But that's not true. His mission was a huge success. Oh, he looked like a failure to the world. And he looked like, he looked like a failure to the world not only because he was crucified, but because the population in general rejected him. <laughs> wow, he's a failure. He's not popular. That's the world's value system. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, that's also the value system of modern evangelicalism. I've mentioned this before. 
A prominent evangelical leader was asked, how do you know if you're a, a Christian leader? His answer was to turn around and see if anybody is following you. <laughs> Boy, does that ever reveal the mindset of modern evangelicalism. Turn around and see if anybody is following you. That means you're a successful leader. Nothing could be further from the truth. If that's the case, Jesus was a miserable failure. And so were all the apostles, for that matter, because they didn't have many people following them. Doesn't make you a leader. Doesn't make you successful. Doing what God wants you to do will make you successful. And it might look like a pitiful failure to the world and to modern evangelicalism, but they're so worldly-minded that it doesn't matter. Who cares? I'd be afraid if they thought I was successful. I'd be afraid that I'd, I'm doing something wrong. Jesus looked like a failure because the population in general rejected him. But he was, an, he was a very huge success because he obeyed the Father. 17, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, there is a difference between someone who is religious and someone who has repented and asked Jesus Christ to be their Lord and Savior. There is a huge difference there. I was, I was viewing a Catholic podcast, and they were talking about um, people who leave the Catholic Church, and then they're all excited about their new religion, and they give it... 100% because it's something new. And if they would have stayed in the Catholic Church and given it 100%, then they would have appreciated what the Catholic Church has, and they never would have left. These guys totally missed the point. The point is, the person got saved because of the Bible, which you would never, which never would have happened in the Catholic Church. He heard preaching, solid, straightforward preaching of the Word of God, he knew he had to repent. He knew he had to receive Christ as Lord and Savior and make a commitment to him. And it wasn't enough just to go through some ritual. I'm not against ritual, but it's not a substitute. So the person gets saved and has a hunger for the Word of God, which he won't get at the Catholic Church. So he leaves and he's all excited about his new church, his, his new faith, because it's all about the Word of God. They com they're completely oblivious to that. They think it's a question of religion. And being devoted to your religion, it's not about that. There's a huge difference between someone who is religious and someone who has repented and asked Christ to be their Lord and Savior. A real change takes place when somebody does that. You see, they become a new person on the inside. They start wanting what God wants and start disliking what God dislikes. It's not about religion. 18. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Now we cannot make ourselves right with God. If it gets done, it is God who does it, and he only does it through the Savior Jesus Christ. And since that's the only way it happens, we Christians have the only message that can save people from hell. Jesus leaves us here on earth after he saves us to help tell others that message, to get out the word of God, because that's the only way that people get saved. So no matter what else we do or do not do, we should have a part in doing the most important thing, and that's getting out the word of God. Somehow, some way. 19. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. So from the moment we become a Christian, God doesn't count our sins against us. God erases them from our record, and that is how we are reconciled to him. If we had sin on our souls, we could not be right with God. Our sins create a canyon that separate us from God and us from heaven. And doing works, 
to try to make up for our sin will not do the job. 20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We beg you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. A good ambassador does not talk about himself or talk about what he thinks. It's not about him. If he's an ambassador, a good one, he doesn't talk about himself. He is irrelevant. The ambassador is not the issue. He simply represents his country to the country that he's assigned to. We Christians are not the issue. We should not attempt to be the focus. And it is disgusting when pastors and preachers try to be the object of focus. Our own opinions don't matter. What people think of us doesn't matter. No, not really. What matters is, are we representing Jesus correctly? That's what we're called to do. We should be telling the world what Jesus thinks and what he has done, not trying to draw attention to ourselves. 21. For he hath made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Bible verses don't get any better than this. And boy, if there was ever one verse that crystallized the gospel message, the message of salvation, this has got to be it. Jesus was good. He was holy. He was absolutely sinless. And we are just the opposite. But God took all of our sins, poured them into Jesus while he was hanging on the cross. And then after Jesus suffered for our sins and after we ask him to save us, he pours all his goodness and holiness and sinlessness into us. So we gave him all of our bad. He gives us all of our good. That's the only way anyone can be right with God because his standard is perfection. God's standard is absolute moral perfection. And the only way any of us can be perfect before him is if Jesus transfers all his perfection to our spiritual account. And that's what happens. He made it possible on the cross and it happens every single time a lost sinner, no matter how rotten they've been, repents and receives Jesus as Lord and Savior. That's how it happens. Be grateful to God. I am. And we'll stop right there for today. Study all of God's word with me at thebibleversebyverse.com. Choose, click, and listen from four complete series going through the whole Bible verse by verse. If you'd like to be a part of this ministry, you can be by praying for me and praying for God's word. And when you take a break from studying at thebibleversebyverse.com, Go to the front page, click the donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. That also makes you a part of this ministry. Until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. So long, everyone.